Welcome to Your Cyber Path, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job by sharing the secrets of experienced hiring managers and top cybersecurity professionals with you. Now, on to the show. Okay, now um, we talked about hashing uh, as a function, but in order to, to, to either calculate a hash, uh, well, I guess if you're gonna if you're gonna gen- you if you're gonna verify a hash, you're gonna you're gonna just generate a new hash and compare them. But how do, how does that actually work, Jason? How do you actually do that? How do you actually calculate the hash value? Yeah, so a hash value is simply an encryption algorithm. But what makes it special is that it takes a variable length input and it creates a fixed length output. So even if I take uh, you know a really long book like the dictionary or the Bible or the Encyclopedia Britannica and I put it through this hashing algorithm. I'm still going to get the exact same uh, size value on the outside. So if I'm using something like MD5, I'm going to get a 128-bit hash. If I'm using uh, SHA-1, I'm going to get a 160-bit hash. SHA-2, I'm going to get a 256-bit hash. That's my result. And even if I have one character or a million characters, it's going to create the same length on the outside. So I can take whatever thing I want and put it through this hash and always get a unique individual fingerprint that I can use to identify that file. And I know on a previous episode, you know, going back a couple of weeks, we talked about integrity. Uh, we, we delve really deep into integrity and hashing back then as well. Um, yeah. So that's another one. If you haven't listened to that episode, I recommend going back and listening to it. But, but that's the basics of how a hash works. Uh, so so that, why, is there, why is there multiple hashing algorithms? Yeah. So I just named off three of them. Why do we need three? Yeah, yeah there, there's more than three, but those are the three most common ones, right? And uh, really what it comes down to is the longer your key, the fixed length output, uh, which is not the key, sorry, the fixed length output, the hash value, the hash digest, the longer that is, the stronger that algorithm is considered. So if I have something like MD5 and I have 128 bits as my output, there's an infinite number of inputs because I can have every movie, every file, every, every letter, every one and zero in the world mm-hmm. will create a unique hash value. But there's only two to the 128 individual values that we have. And because of that, we have what's known as collisions. That's where you take the same thing, uh, you know, take two different things and get the same result. So for instance, if I walked into a classroom, uh, I used to be a college professor. Um, if I walked into a classroom with 30 people, the chances are, if I asked if people had the same birth month, lots of people had the same birth month. If I asked, hey, who, was, who else was born on the same day as John or Mary? Generally, there's going to be at least two people in the class that share a birthday if you have 22 or more people. Um, not the same year, but the same month and day. And we call that the birthday, colli- uh, the birthday paradox or the birthday collision. And this is how you can see how, you know, because there are only 365 days possible for people to have birthdays. uh, And if I put 22 people or more in a room, the chances are two of them are going to match up. Uh, There's a greater than 50% chance that two of them will match up. And and so that's why we have this thing called a collision. Mm. What's happening is because we can create these collisions at hash values by having two different inputs creating the same output, I might have a no good file that is digitally signed with MD5 hash that says, this is Kip's good program file digitally signed. I say, wonderful. Let me go and create another file that will have the same exact hash digest, but it includes Kip's code and some Trojans and some other white space until I can get it so I get the exact same hash value. And if I do that, I can then put my malicious code out there and people will download it thinking it's Kip's good software, but it's actually a hacked version that I create. But even though it'll generate the same hash. Exactly, right? And so this becomes what we know as a collision. And because we kept having these collisions with MP5, we moved to something stronger, which was SHA-1, because we went from 128 bits to 160 bits, which means we have a lot more uh, unique values. But again, that wasn't enough. So we went to 256, and then 384, and then 512. We keep adding more. And the longer the hash digest on the outside is, the, the, the less likely it is to have collisions from what you generate. And, and so that's why you know, we have these weaker hashing algorithms like MD5 that we don't want to use anymore. Because they are weak and they're, they are vulnerable to this collision or birth, we call this the birthday attack. Uh, right, right. Birthday attack happening against. I think you explained it very, very well. And if anybody gets this question on your interview, just listen to the <laughs> listen to what Jason said again because he did a great job answering the question and then the follow up question uh, that I gave him. <laughs> 